Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. This is your big brother, Dr. Umar Ifatunde Oguntade. Uh, just a couple of thoughts, couple of thoughts, couple of thoughts. Number one, on the incident in Pennsylvania involving President Trump this past Saturday, I want to say that I believe that that was completely staged by the white power structure of America. I believe the President Trump incident was completely staged by the power structure of America. I want to say that the President Trump incident was completely staged by the power structure of white America. Why do I say that? There have been six attempted presidential assassinations in this country. There has been six attempted presidential unalivings in this country. There have been six attempted presidential unalivings in this country. Let's take a quick look. We have President Abraham Lincoln. He was the first president in American history to be unalived in April of 1865. April of 1865. And then we have President Garfield. He was the, sec the second president to be unalived in American history in 1881. 1881. 1881. Then President McKinley was the third president to be unalived in America in 1901. 1901. 1901. After we have the unaliving of President McKinley in 1901. The next presidential unaliving would be President John F. Kennedy on November the 22nd of 1963. November the 22nd of 1963. Following the unaliving of President John F. Kennedy, there were two unsuccessful attempted unalivings. Those two unsuccessful attempted presidential unalivings was President Ronald Reagan in 1981. President Ronald Reagan, 1981. President Ronald Reagan, 1981. And then of course, President Donald Trump on July the 13th, 2024. Let me ask you a couple questions. Do you believe in political coincidence? I don't believe in political coincidence. Whenever you have political coincidences, you have conspiracy, you have strategy, you have planning, and you have deliberate intent. The last two presidents to undergo an attempted unaliving were both Republicans. The last two presidents to undergo attempted unalivings were both Republicans. President Ronald Reagan was a Republican. President Donald Trump was a Republican. And both of them were non-traditional politicians. Both of them were non-traditional politicians. Both of them were non-traditional politicians. President Ronald Reagan came over from Hollywood. He was an entertainer. President Ronald Reagan came over from Hollywood. He was an entertainer. He was governor of California before becoming president. But nonetheless, he did not have a traditional political career. President Donald Trump was also a non-traditional politician. He came over from the business sector. He came over from the world of entrepreneurship. President Ronald Reagan's attempted unaliving happened a few months after he was just elected in his first term. President Donald Trump's attempted unaliving takes place a few months before he seeks a second term. I'm bringing this up to say that I believe that President Donald Trump's unaliving was done by the power structure so that they could intensify the martyr narrative that the Republican National Convention is pushing on the American people to engender Donald Trump into the American public's heart so that they will vote for him in this November. That attempted unaliving, which I believe was completely staged for Donald Trump, I believe to me, my opinion at this time based on the evidence, and it could change, but my opinion right now is that Donald Trump is the white power structure's selection 
to be president of the United States this November. Again, my opinion could change based on subsequent evidence and information. But as of right now, I believe that Donald Trump is the power structure's choice to be the next president. Otherwise, it would have not been necessary to stage an attempted unaliving so Donald Trump could look more like a martyr, more like a victim. He's already looking like a martyr. He's already looking like a victim. He's always he's already looking like he's up against the American power structure after being convicted of a felony, after being charged with a felony, being the only president in American history to be convicted of a felony while holding office and now an attempted unaliving and now an attempted unaliving and now an attempted unaliving. I believe without question that Donald Trump is the power structure's choice and they're doing everything they can to paint him like he is a victim of unfair targeting, unfair slander, and unfair cheating by the Democratic National Convention. Now, when Ronald Reagan was shot in 1981, he also wasn't too popular at the time. And that shooting helped to improve his standing in popularity amongst the American public. Same thing with Republican uh, former president and presidential hopeful Donald Trump. Now, let me let me let me alert y'all to something else, my brothers and sisters. Please hit the cash app dollar sign FDMG school. Please hit the cash app dollar sign FDMG school. Please hit the cash app dollar sign FDMG school. Please hit the PayPal PayPal dot me slash FDMG Academy. Please hit the PayPal PayPal dot me slash FDMG Academy. Please mail in your check of money order payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware. Please donate, send your check of money order payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. You can also text message me for that information, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. If you need to text me to schedule a podcast, interview, life coaching section, consultation, lecture, seminar, whatever you need. Here's another point I want to bring up to y'all about the six attempted presidential aliving, unalivings. Let me hit y'all up with another point that I want you to understand, understand, and overstand about the six attempted presidential unalivings in American history. Okay. President Abraham Lincoln was unalived on a Friday. President Abraham Lincoln was unalived on a Friday. President McKinley was unalived on a Friday. President John F. Kennedy was unalived on a Friday. President Abraham Lincoln was unalived on a Friday. President McKinley was unalived on a Friday. President Garfield was unalived on a Saturday. President Ronald Reagan's attempted unaliving was on a Saturday. President Donald Trump's att attempted unaliving was on a Saturday. Brothers and sisters, can I ask you a question? Why is it that three of the six attempted presidential unalivings were on a Friday and the other three attempted presidential unalivings were on a Saturday? Do you believe in coincidences? Because I don't. Do you believe in political coincidences? Because I don't. I'm going to say it again. Abraham Lincoln was unalived on a Friday. John F. Kennedy was unalived on a Friday. President McKinley was unalived on a Friday. Donald Trump's attempted unaliving Saturday. Ronald Reagan attempted under unaliving Saturday. President Garfield's unaliving a Saturday. Why do they only attempt unalivings on Fridays and Saturdays? Why do they only attempt unalivings on a Friday or Saturday? Because there's less security, less bureaucracy, there's more opportunity for success. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. 
Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I want you to understand, overstand, and understand. When you study the FBI, when you study the CIA, when you study the Department of Homeland Security, when you study the National Security Agency, they are too perfect in what they do. There is no way anybody could have got anywhere near Donald Trump last Saturday in Pennsylvania to attempt an unaliving without the participation of the state. Are you listening to me? The FBI, they do a thorough search. The CIA, thorough search. Homeland Security, thorough search. National Security Agency, thorough search. You don't get no weapon anywhere near a president. Not only that, the presidents have about a dozen body doubles. The presidents have about a dozen body doubles. The presidents have about a, do a dozen body doubles. Barack Obama had body doubles. Joe Biden has body doubles. Donald Trump has body doubles. They use these body doubles whenever they suspect that there might be a threat. They will send an imitation body double in to a threat area to sniff out the perpetrator. There's no way in hell they were not aware of a threat. There's no way in hell anybody with a, with a weapon gets anywhere near Donald Trump. And there's no way in hell he has the opportunity to wave a fist. There's no way he wipes blood off his face and wave a fist if this was a real attempted unaliving. This was a publicity stunt to improve his popularity. This was a publicity stunt to improve his popularity. Let me ask you a question. 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 Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, President Barack Obama received more unalive threats than any president in American history. Barack Obama received more threats on his existence than any president in American history because of his color, although he was not loyal to it because of his color. Do you, do you want me to believe that, Donald, that Barack Obama served as president of the United States for eight consecutive years, the most death threats of any president in American history, and he never experienced an attempted unaliving. Barack Obama never experienced an attempted unaliving. And you want me to believe that President Donald Trump, as popular as he is, although the mayor tried to, excuse me, although the media tried to make him appear unpopular, as popular as Donald Trump is, as popular as Donald Trump is among Caucasian nation. Caucasian nation means white America. As popular as Donald Trump is amongst Caucasian nation. You want me to believe that somebody attempted to unalive him without the participation of the U.S. government, but President Barack Obama, who received the most death threats of any president in American history, never ever received an attempted unaliving. Don't play games with me. We know Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, not for helping slaves, because he did not care about enslaved Africans. Abraham Lincoln wasn't assassinated for helping slaves because he didn't care about enslaved Africans. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated because he wanted the American government to print its own money. Abraham Lincoln wanted to take American currency out of the private banks. I'm going to say it again. Do your research. You don't have to believe me. Do your research. You don't have to believe me. President Abraham Lincoln was unalived because he wanted to take American money out of the private banks. That's why he was unalived. President John F. Kennedy was also unalived because he considered taking American money out of the private banks. Not to mention his brother, Robert F. Kennedy, threatened to take down the mob, the same mafia that helped his brother get elected president. You cannot bite the hand that feeds you. RFK tried to take down the same mafia that helped his brother get elected president of the United States. John F. Kennedy also wanted to take American money out of the private banks. No president has ever been murdered in American history unless the government ordered the hit. I'm going to say it again. No president has ever been murdered in American history without the government ordering the unaliving brothers and sisters. Let's go to the good Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
For those of y'all who believe President Trump's unaliving was not staged, let's go to the good Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the most thoroughly planned governmental assassination in American history. The most thoroughly planned governmental assassination in American history. The most thoroughly planned governmental assassination in American history. The good Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King was assassinated by a sharpshooter from the Memphis Police Department. We know this. We know this is bona fide fact. Dr. King was assassinated by a sharpshooter of the Memphis Police Department. The Green Berets of the U.S. military were the backup shooters. The Green Berets of the U.S. military were the backup shooters in the Dr. King execution. The Green Berets were the backup shooters in Dr. King's execution. Let me say this. When the U.S. government carries out a political assassination, they always have backup shooters. When the U.S. government carries out political assassinations, they always have backup shooters. When the U.S. government carries out political assassinations, they always have backup shooters. Dr. King was not a sitting president. He was president of black America, as I am today, but he was not a sitting president. Dr. King was president of black America, as I am today, but he was not a sitting president. You mean to tell me they would have a backup shooter for Dr. King? They would have a backup shooter for Dr. King, but they wouldn't have a backup shooter for President Trump. Make it make sense. They had a backup shooter for El Hodge, Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X. They had backup shooters for El Hodge, Malik El Shabazz, but they didn't have a backup shooter for President Donald Trump. You can fool some of the people all the time, and you can fool all the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time, and you can fool all the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time, and you can fool all the people some of the time. But you can't fool the Prince of Pan-Africanism none of the time. You can't fool the Prince of Pan-Africanism none of the time. You can't fool the Prince of Pan-Africanism none of the time. Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina. Where is South Carolina? Where are my South Carolina Africans at? I am not talking to pretendians. I'm talking to Africans. I am not talking to pretendians. I am talking to Africans. Where are my South Carolina Africans at? Where are my South Carolina Africans at? I will see y'all next Wednesday, July the 24th, 7 p.m. at the House of Hathor, 6319 Main Street in Columbia, South Carolina. I will see you next Wednesday, July the 24th, 7 p.m. at the House of Hathor, 6319 Main Street in Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina. Next Wednesday, July the 24th at 6319 Main Street. Pull up, pull up, show up and show out Columbia, South Carolina. I'm back for the first time since Juneteenth, two or three years ago. I'm back for the first time since Juneteenth, two or three years ago. Miami Gardens, Florida. Miami Gardens, Florida. Where are my South Floridian Africans? Where are my South Floridian Africans? Where are my South Floridian Africans? I will be speaking in Miami Gardens. Next Saturday, July the 27th at three o'clock. The event is from noon until seven. We will be at 2820 Northwest 167th Terrace, just like last year. We're going to run it back. We're going to run it back. Just like last year, we're going to run it back. Miami Gardens, Saturday, July the 27th. Dr. Umar speaks at three. The event is from 12 until seven. 2820 Northwest 167th Terrace. It is the day of the direct descendants of Africans enslaved in America. It is a celebration of Africans enslaved in America, the descendants of Africans enslaved in America. Okay? Come and learn about an organization that fights for the American African but does not alienate non-american africans because it is pan-africanism a parish 
It is unify or die. We rise together or we don't rise at all. On that note, I want to take it to Kendrick Lamar and Drake one time. On that note, I want to take it to Kendrick Lamar and Drake one time. On that note, I want to take it to Kendrick Lamar and Drake. I was on an interview yesterday with some good brothers from Toronto, Canada. I was on a podcast interview yesterday morning with some good brothers from Toronto, Canada. Shout out to brother Alex and my other brother who came down from Canada to interview the Prince of Pan-Africanism yesterday before the Source of Knowledge book giveaway. And one of the concerns that they brought up to me as a Pan-Africanist, as the leading Pan-Africanist, as the Prince of Pan-Africanism, they said, Dr. Umar, and I'm paraphrasing, the good brothers brought it to my attention that Kendrick Lamar's song, They Not Like Us, was interpreted by many American Africans to mean that African Canadians are not African, that African Canadians are not African, that African Canadians are not African. Let me say this to the entire African diaspora. Let me say this to the American African and the Canadian African. Let me say this to the American African and the Canadian African. Let me say this to the American African and the Canadian African. We are one people. We are one family. We have one common ancestry. We have one common origin. We have one common source. We are the original people. My American Africans, don't you alienate yourself from Canadian Africans. Canadian Africans, don't you alienate yourself from the American African. We are one family. We are the North American Africans. I said, if you are a Mexican African, a North American African, or a Canadian African, we are collectively the North American Africans. United we stand, divided we fall. My Canadian brothers and sisters, they are my family. Toronto is my family. Montreal is my family. And if anybody tries to make jokes about the Canadian Africans, if anybody tries to say that my brothers and sisters north of the border are not members of the African family. If anybody tries to claim that the Canadian African is not a part, an integral part, an important part of the body of African people, then you are an enemy to Dr. Umar and you are an enemy to African people and you are a enemy of the pan-African struggle. Now, I don't know if my brother Kendrick Lamar, who I love and respect, I don't know if my brother Kendrick Lamar, who I love and respect, I don't know if my brother Kendrick Lamar intended to alienate all African Canadians, all Canadian Africans. I did not think that was his intent. I did not think that that was Kendrick Lamar's intent. I did not think that that was Kendrick Lamar's intent. I believe Kendrick Lamar was simply going at Drake for the beef. I did not think that the song, They Not Like Us, was a shot at all African Canadians. So I'm going to ask my brother Kendrick Lamar, can you please clear that up? I'm going to ask my brother Kendrick Lamar, can you please clear that up? I'm going to ask my brother Kendrick Lamar, can you please clear that up? Did you intend to slight all Canadian Africans when you said they not like us? Are you trying to say that Canadian Africans are different from American Africans? I don't believe Kendrick Lamar was trying to say that. I don't believe Kendrick Lamar was trying to say that. I don't believe Kendrick Lamar was trying to say that, but I do want my brother Kendrick to clarify because according to my good brother, Alex and my other brother from Toronto who interviewed me yesterday, according to them, many American Africans are insulting Canadian Africans. Many American Africans are going on the blogs with the Drake Kendrick beef and you are attacking and insulting Canadian Africans. I will not stand for that. I will not stand for that. No African should ever be the enemy of another African. United we stand, divided we fall. I stand in solidarity with Canada. <clears throat> I stand in solidarity with Black Canada. Those are my brothers and sisters. And I will see y'all October 5th and October 6th. And for my brother Drake, I need you to clarify whether or not you are a black man. Some people are claiming my brother Drake who I love and respect, my brother Drake, who I love and respect. Some people is claiming that you embrace a mixed race identity, that you do not embrace a black first identity. So I have to ask my brother Drake to clear the record for me, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. 
Maybe we can have a sit down when I come to Toronto, October 5th and 6th. But I need you to clarify that for me, Brother Drake. Brother Drake, I need you to clarify. Are you a black first black man or do you identify as mixed race or do you identify as untouchable first? Are you, do you primarily identify as an untouchable? Do you identify as mixed race? Or are you a black first black man? I need to know this, my brother Drake. I need to know this, my brother Drake. You have to clarify this for me. Some people believe you only claim black when it's convenient. Some people believe you only claim to be black when it's convenient. I've never seen you do that, but I don't follow you that closely. I don't follow Kendrick that closely. I don't follow none of the modern era rappers that closely. Most of my favorite rappers are in the 80s and the 90s. So out of respect for my brother Drake, who I will consider to be an African, who I will consider to be my brother until he says otherwise. But my concern with my brother Drake, you've been at the forefront for a long time and we should clearly know what you identify as. Are you black all the time or are you black some of the time? Because if you are only black some of the time, I'm here to tell you you're not black any of the time. You got to pick a side and stay on it, my brother. You got to pick a side and stay on it. And I'm not accusing my brother Drake of anything. I'm not accusing my brother Drake of anything. I'm not accusing my brother Drake of anything. I'm simply asking my brother to clarify. Do you identify as black first? Or are you mixed race first? Or are you Jewish first? I just need clarity, my brother. I just need clarity. Now, my brothers and sisters. Columbia next Wednesday. Miami next Saturday. And then after we hit up Miami, Ypsilanti, Michigan. Where are my Michigan Africans at? Where are my Michigan Africans? Look at my Michigan Africans. Just because he has a child with a non-African woman, which I don't support, doesn't mean he doesn't identify as black first. Because many of you ninjas who don't have a white parent have babies with bunnies and you claim to be black first. So let's not hold Drake to a double standard. Let's not hold Drake to a double standard. Let's not hold Drake to a double standard. Where my Michigan Africans at? Where my Michigan Africans at? Where my Michigan, I will be at Eastern Michigan University, August 2nd and 3rd for the Black Consciousness Conference. It is free and open to the public. Eastern Michigan University, Black Consciousness Conference, August 2nd and 3rd. Eastern Michigan University, Black Consciousness Conference, August 2nd and 3rd, Eastern Michigan University, Black Consciousness Conference, August 2nd and 3rd, from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m., 3 p.m. until 7 on Friday, August the 2nd, 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. on Saturday, August the 3rd. I want to see my Flint, Michigan Africans. I want to see my Highland Park Africans. I want to see my Grand Rapids Africans. I want to see my Muskegon Africans. I want to see all my Michigan Africans at Eastern Michigan University Black Consciousness Conference in Ypsilanti, Michigan, Friday, August the 2nd and Saturday, August the 3rd from 3 until 7. Boonell, Florida. Who's standing with me? Who's standing with me on Tuesday, August the 6th, 8 o'clock? For the Brendan Depa trial in Boonell, Florida. Who's coming to stand with Dr. Umar to save the life of this young black man? Who is coming to stand with Dr. Umar to save the life of this young black man? Who is coming to stand with Dr. Umar to save the life of this young black man, Brendan Depa, August the 6th? We will not let him go to jail for 30 years. We will not let him go to jail for 30 years. We will not let Brendan Depa go to jail for 30 years. Jacksonville, Florida, will you come stand with me? Orlando, Florida, will you come stand with me? Black Georgia, will you come stand with me? Miami, Palm Beach, will you come stand with me? Tallahassee, will you come stand with me at 8 o'clock a.m. for the Brendan Depa resentencing hearing? Brothers and sisters, let's pack the courtroom. Can we please pack the courtroom on August the 6th? Can we please pack the courtroom on August the 6th at 8 o'clock? Kim C. Hammond, Criminal Justice Center, Boonell, Florida, 1769 East Moody Boulevard. 
1769 East Moody Boulevard, Brunel, Florida, Tuesday, August the